Hello everyone, today I am reviewing The Witcher Blood Origin, but before that remember to like the video, helps out the channel a lot, and subscribe, and yada yada yada, let's get to it. So let me start out by saying, it's not good. It's bad. And I had low expectations to begin with, and this was worse than I expected. I never understood why they were making this to begin with, how many people were clamoring for a prequel about the time before the conjunction centered on elves. At least with the last prequel, Nightmare of the Wolf, we got to learn more about a character we know, Vesemir. All this did was change lore and tell a story that did not need to be told. Now there is a lot of problems with the writing and some of the CGI, but let's focus on the lore they changed first, because personally, that is where most of my issues lie. They changed the lore on witchers and why they were made, they changed the lore on Aridin, the man who becomes the leader of the Wild Hunt, and they basically changed all of the elven lore. So first, let's start with the witchers. In the show, they take a heart from a monster from a different land and inject its juices into Fial to make him stronger so he can fight a creature that is being controlled by the kingdom of Zentrea. Now, Fial is an elf. To my knowledge from the games and books, there has never been an elven witcher because elves tend to be stronger than regular humans. They live longer and they have better endurance. So there was never a reason for elves to become witchers, they were already a slightly worse version of them. In the original lore, the northern rulers tasked mages to create witchers to help fight the monsters that inhabit the land. Humans are weaker, so this makes sense to have mutated humans that can help with the monster problem. Now you could say this could still be the case. Northern lords still do that, but elves just happen to have done it first and humans were able to make it a slightly safer process. Yes, that could be the case, I don't have an argument for that. But just don't even bother with shoehorning the Witcher stuff in it then. Like, does it add to the story at all that they made Fjall a Witcher? Not really. The Aridin lore and in the same breath the Elven lore changed drastically, like it's completely different from the books. So in this they had Aridin in the same world as the Witcher takes place in, the continent. He is from the world that Ciri and Geralt are from, which is not the case in the books. In the books, Aridin is from a different world. The elves Aridin is from are NL elves, and the elves we see in Geralt's world, the continent, are known as Enshe elves. The two groups of elves share descendants. The elves were on the same world at one time before the conjunction of spears, but the world was dying and the two groups left through the monoliths and gateways, and they ended up on two different worlds. The NL would continue to use the gateways to conquer new worlds and bring slaves back, preferably humans because they despised them and thought they were lower beings. Aridin was in charge of these raids and he and his riders would abduct people. They became infamous and people started calling this group the Wild Hunt. When Aridin discovered that the world the Enshe settled was being overran by humans, he made the continent the primary target for his raids. But when the conjunction of spheres happened, the NL lost the ability to travel through the gateways. This is why they want Ciri so badly since she can still access them because of her elder blood. In Blood Origin, Aridin has never been on a raid to a different world. He doesn't even know humans exist. It also seems that there aren't two races of elves since Aridin is from the continent. In the show, Balor traps him on a random red planet, him and like eight other people. We also see him find a skull mask thing he puts on his head, signifying that he has become the Wild Hunt. The problem with this is that this is just a planet they are trapped on. There doesn't seem to be any other life. In the books, after the conjunction, the NL elves were able to open gateways again by having mages study world travel. These were called navigators. They were only slightly successful though. They could only transport a small group of people to a different world. In the show, Aridin and his group don't have any mages with experience traveling to different worlds. There are no books, there are no monoliths, how is Aridin's group going to figure out how to open the gateways? In season 2, Geralt knew who the Wild Hunt was, so clearly they have been able to travel, but how? It just doesn't make sense. Also in the books, Aridin has a clear reason to travel, to get human slaves. In the show, what is his reasoning to travel to other worlds? The king of the NL elves isn't commanding him to go get slaves. 
The only reason I can think of is that he wants to go back home. But as I said, the group has been able to travel at some point. So why doesn't he just go home then? Some people may say, well, he wants to conquer other worlds. That was his main goal in the first place. Well, in the books, that would make sense since he has the full support of the NL Elves. So he has a huge army at his back. In this, he has like 8-10 people on a planet with him. How is he going to conquer anything with that? I just really do not like these changes that they have made to the elven lore. It just doesn't make any sense story-wise. They made it simpler, which makes it dumber. It wasn't a very complicated thing to begin with. I just don't get what they are doing over there. These changes are confusing and annoy me. So that was the lore stuff. Let's get into the actual show itself now. The CGI was bad. The monster looked so gross, like it was from a 2000s movie. Some of the dialogue in it had me rolling my eyes like, F off, Jesus. Like in episode 4, someone said that the Lark, Ayla, was the voice of the people. Come on, because she sang a song about Black Roads or something? She didn't do enough in the 4 episodes to earn that. Another thing that bothered me was when Balor kept telling Eredin when they were searching for Fjall and Ayla how badly they need to kill him. And he would specifically point out how it's like a folktale. The first episode he says, we need to kill them. It's a heroic folktale waiting to happen. He basically says the same thing again in the second episode. He says, two warriors who overcome all obstacles stacked against them bound together by destiny, etc., etc. There's enough of a seed there to grow a powerful story that the peasants can latch onto. Like, this just feels like the writers knew this wasn't the most original story ever told, so they were kind of poking fun at it. It just felt a little bit too on the nose for me. I'd rather them not acknowledge that at all. Like, it was a bit self-aware, and I did not like that. In episode 4, they sneak into Zentrea wearing Zentrea armor, once they sneak in and take out a few guards, they take the armor off, and they are just wearing normal clothes. You're about to fight an army in a tank top. Just keep the armor on. At least it would give you some protection. Now granted, none of them needed it against the army. They were just too badass. So they got me there. Another issue is when Merwin releases Balor after Avalak fails to use the monolith. Avalak literally tries once and fails. That's it. And they immediately go back to Balor, the person they just betrayed and imprisoned, to ask him to do it. And expected that he was not going to betray them at all in any way. Another issue is when they had their red wedding moment when they killed all the clans and other monarchs from the different kingdoms. I didn't mind this moment actually. I thought it was pretty cool. The issue is we don't know enough about the characters to care if they die. This was literally the first episode. Also, the monster just blowing people up was kind of meh. I'd rather see stabbings and bodies on the ground. The blowing up made it seem too clean. I will give them this, though. The fight scenes were very well done. I did enjoy those. Props to them on that. I didn't think the actors and actresses did a horrible job. I think a lot of them are probably pretty talented, but acting can't overcome bad dialogue and just an overall crappy story. Daniel Day-Lewis couldn't make this any better than what it is. I really like the actor who played Aridin. Physically, I don't know if he was big enough for the role, but he had this conniving way about him that drew me to the character. Him being gay is interesting. I don't believe it is ever said what his preference is, so they aren't going against lore, I guess. It just felt kind of random. Aridin is supposed to be kind of a ruthless guy, and to give him a partner kind of made him more relatable, more human. And I wonder if his partner is still alive or not in the main show, and will it come up again in the main show? Because I feel like if you're going to introduce Aridin as being gay, it should come up again in some way, because why bother if it doesn't have any meaning to the rest of Aridin's story? And that is about it. I'm sure there's more stuff if I watch through it again, but I'm not going to do that. I was going to do the explain videos for this series as I've done for all the other Witcher series on Netflix, but I just really don't feel like rewatching this. It's not good. If I had to rate it, it would be maybe a five, and that's pretty generous. I think because of how bad this was received, this is going to get Netflix to make some changes to the Witcherverse, like the Rats prequel that was supposed to be coming out next year. I'm guessing it's going to be canned. 
And hopefully they get some people that understand what fans want with this series. So what did you think of The Witcher Blood Origin? Is there anything you really hated about it or liked for that matter? Leave it down in the comments below and if you want more Witcher content, please subscribe and like the video. Also check out the Twitter link in the description below and as always, have an awesome day.